Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we have one of Shark RF's latest products. Now this is called the Mic, and I guess it's called that, well, because it looks like one. However, technically, this is an IP transceiver. It can literally do any of the modes your MMDVM hotspots can do, but without the need for an actual radio. Not only does it cover modes like C4FM, DMR, D-Star, NXDN, P25, it can also access Echolink, POCSAG via DAPnet, which is pages for amateur radio, APRS, and even the All-Star network, which we know is an analog system in terms of audio. Now, these are currently priced at around €300, Euros, but if you think about how much it would cost to buy an MMDVM hotspot, which actually they're pretty cheap at the moment, but actually buying a single radio for each digital mode, then the €300 Euros doesn't sound too bad in my personal opinion. Of course, you may have different ideas about that, and well, that's perfectly acceptable too. Now it has a 2900 milliamp hour light iron battery, which is rechargeable via a USB-C port, which is located on the bottom. And the specifications state the battery could last up to 30 hours of use. The speaker on the front includes DSP audio processing with dynamic range compression, automatic gain control and equalization to try and assist making any received audio sound the best that it can be. Now, we all know that digital modes do not exactly sound that great, even at the best of times. All the setup, switching connectors, i.e. to different digital mode servers, can all be performed on the mic itself, using those buttons down the right side. However, once you have the mic connected to your Wi-Fi, you can use the web-based UI, either on your mobile phone or on a computer that's on the same network. Now, when you power on the mic for the first time, you'll be prompted to choose which country you're in and then to connect to a Wi-Fi connection, which of course should have an internet connection too. Now, once connected to Wi-Fi, it will then ask you for your call sign, which once entered, it will go off and populate automatically all of your DMR IDs, NXDN ID, etc. Of course, if you've not already registered your call sign on the DMR ID database, the NXDN database, or the D-Star network, then it probably would be wise to do that before setting up your mic. To start using the mic, once connected to Wi-Fi and set up with your call sign, you can enter into the menu using those side buttons and just head to the connector switch area. Now this is where you can choose the mode which you wish to use, such as DMR+, DCS stroke XLX for D-Star, FCS stroke YSF reflector for C4FM, NXDM reflectors, P25 reflectors, and IAX2, which actually is essentially all star. You also have Echolink, DAPnet, and APRS. Each digital mode will normally have a reflector number, or if it's DMR, you'd normally call it a talk group. You can configure your favorite ones within the quick call menu as well, which you can either do on the device itself or you can do it through the web UI. It is actually a little easier to do it through the web UI, but having the option to do it through the mic itself without needing a computer is obviously quite welcomed. Now we will take a look at the web UI in a moment, but first let me connect the mic to the Brandmeister DMR network and connect to talk group 91, which is normally very busy. It's just so you can have a little listen to see what it sounds like. Kilo one whiskey in the radio. Roger, I believe it is. This is KC3VPF. Good morning. Um, my location here is Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And uh, I imagine you're, from, your, from the position from your number, I'm assuming you're up there in the northern states, Vermont, Maine area. But uh, good morning to you. So we're in the same time zone. Hopefully your weather's better than ours, which is, well, let's put it this way, freezing right now. So. And I'd like to take a moment to thank JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Now, JLC PCB provide easy, affordable, and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions, empowering electronic engineers to develop projects efficiently. Now, JLC PCB website is extremely easy to use, and ordering PCBs from JLC PCB is effortless. Just simply upload your Gerber file to get an instant quote and place your order in minutes. It's as easy as shopping online. Now you can get one to eight layer PCBs for just $2 and with efficient large scale production, 
This reduces cost and brings you unbeatable prices. Quality and lead time is highly reliable and all in-house production ensures quality stability, especially with their strict quality control in every process. You can have your PCBs produced in less than 24 hours if you need them in a rush. Easy to use, affordable to make and reliable to trust. You can always count on JLC PCB. Now don't miss out JLC PCB 6 layer PCB special. You can get $30 off with a coupon and enjoy top quality 6 layer PCBs for just $5. Thanks again to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Now just to demonstrate how the mic can connect to actual RF, I have here on the right a TYT MD9600 which I have programmed up for a local DMR repeater. Now GB7AV is connected to the DMR Plus network and well there's loads of talk groups that we can use. One of which is a bit like a channel and this one is called Chat5. So with my mic connected to the DMR Plus network over internet I will tell it to connect to the talk group 84 which actually equals that Chat5 channel. So the radio on the right is connected to an actual antenna outside and is tuned to the correct frequency for GB7AV. It is also set to talk group 84. Now when I transmit on the radio on the right side, the repeater then sends my signal to talk group 84 across the internet. And as my mic is connected to talk group 84, I can hear my voice coming through the mic. M0 DQW testing. M0 DQW testing. Testing 12345. M0 DQW testing. Of course, this also works the other way too. If I talk on the mic, then my voice will come out of the actual radio here. That's obviously going from the internet to RF, which is one of the reasons why you do need a license still to use one of these mics. M0 DQW testing, transmitting on the M1KE by Shark RF. As the mic is connected to my home Wi Fi currently, I can go ahead and open a browser on my iPhone. The iPhone is also connected to my home Wi-Fi network. In the address bar, I just type m1ke.local and then the web UI from the mic will be shown. Now this is a little nicer compared to the screen on the mic itself and this is just another way of controlling it. Like I said earlier, all the controls are available on the mic itself using those side buttons and that front facing screen. But when at home, I like to either use my mobile phone like this or use a web browser on my computer like this. Now opening the web UI on a computer with a larger screen can be quite useful, especially for setting up quick call features and keeping an eye on the status of the mic. You can easily navigate through connectors and also go into the settings page where you can adjust things like gain for all the different modes. Yep, you can have the option to choose a separate gain for each of the modes or connectors that this mic supports. One useful feature is on the network tab and if you enable the advanced tick box you'll see a list of potential Wi-Fi networks that the mic can connect to. For example I could have one set up for use at home and then I could have one set up for use when I'm in the car so it will automatically connect to my car's Wi-Fi or maybe I want to connect my mobile phone's Wi-Fi and use cellular data over Wi-Fi with a private Wi-Fi hotspot. In fact let's just test how well the mic works using cell data from my mobile phone. Oliver is my handle, and uh, the QTH is Heine. Romeo Hotel Echo India November Echo. Rhein in northwest part of Germany. Uh, did you understand? Uh, BY6 PWL DJ5 QW list. So my phone has 4G internet, and the mic appears to work perfectly well, just over a 4G network. Now while I was testing the mic from home networks to my mobile phone hotspot made me wonder why the mic does not have cell access built in. Using an eSIM method could provide very useful for those that do not want to connect to Wi-Fi networks. Now maybe I'll suggest this to the Shark RF team. Let me know what you think about that. It would essentially mean that you wouldn't need to connect to any Wi-Fi network. You'll just actually need to have cell service wherever you are. And uh, it's dry at the moment, but it looks quite cold. A bit of a cold wind. 
Uh, but I have got all the uh, cold weather uh, gear on. And... Uh, now, there's quite a lot to the M1KE, or mic as it's supposed to be said, and it probably would take a very long time to go through each of the screens. However, the mic is essentially something like an MMDVM hotspot, but with the ability to transmit and receive without using a radio. Yep, and that's where it's probably going to lose a lot of people, because it works over IP. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about this product down in the comments below. I already know that some of you are going to bash it because it works over IP and it doesn't have actual any RF within the amateur radio frequencies. But personally, I still think it's quite a useful tool. Anyway, guys, until the next one, take care and I'll see you in the next video.